about knowledge. I think that's why we are all here today, so that we can build on our knowledge to be able to make wise decisions when it comes to investing in real estate. So thank you so much, panelists, for all of your contributions. Now we get to the meat of the matter. Um, I would like to start with uh, Mr. Diasar. With your world of experience in the industry, I read about 40 years, over 40 years experience, sir. What do you think, sir, are the common challenges when it comes to developer-sponsored developer models? And then what are the best ways to actually mitigate this, sir? Thank you very much. Um, basically, I've, I've practiced in the US, in London, and in Nigeria. And there are three different markets entirely. In Nigeria, the biggest challenge we have starts from the get-go, which is the land. Land has become a big problem, especially in high-demand areas. For example, um, I heard the, one of the speakers say that you are going to buy litigation. In Lagos, buying litigation is about the easiest thing. You buy it easily. And uh, my sister here we know how much of battles they've had to go through. Now, having said that, the way I see it in this country, or let me be more specific, in Lagos, would be a shell development. Truth be told, we do not have a mortgage industry. Truth be told, interest rate is simply out of, the, out of this world. Truth be told, tenure for repayment of facilities is virtually impossible. Truth be told, bulk of property purchases in Nigeria and, and particularly in Lagos come from inexplicable sources of income. I do not want to use illegal. So I'd rather use inexplicable. Because if a man who earns a salary of, say, 4 million naira per annum, or even 10 million per annum, he cannot afford a property of 45 million. Because interest rate alone is minimum 20-25%, which would already wipe out his salary. So he really can't afford it. But somehow, they sell. But the pathway to it is really getting shell construction. In other words, I don't have to have the ideal house from day one. You can give me a shell, I'll pay you, and when I can afford it, I plaster one room. When I can afford it, I put windows and doors when I can afford it, until I build my house, which will take time. That, to me, in a nutshell, is the way around it. Thank you. Okay, actually, before I came, um, I was, as Uncle was talking, Mr. Fatimley, I was actually, you know, thinking about three things. You know, I have several, because of course, we play more in the retail sector, and we do more of landed properties, even though we do houses, you know, we've recently started doing a lot of, you know, housing projects. Um, one major challenge, you know, um, that we have faced is, one, a lot of government policies. Before we even go into, I don't want to mention what he has mentioned about financing. I want to say what he hasn't mentioned. Now, a lot of government policies, what do I mean by that? Um, I heard someone in the audience, the last session was talking about um, why will developers, and somebody said, oh, who will think government will come after Lekki Phase 1? Something like that. So recently, there, are so, there may be some promulgations from government that would affect a lot and regard the industry, which we've seen. For instance, earlier on, I was talking about when you said gimmick or reality, when we're talking about how do we do friendly pathways for people to gain properties. Initially, we used to do something like excision in process where we're able to sell landed properties to people for as low as one million in Lagos. And then just all of a sudden, in 2020 or early 2021, the governor says, oh, we're not going to be giving excision any longer in Lagos. 
you know, every land now will be purchased from directly from government as government allocated COVO. So I'm citing a scenario. So what happens? People readily, if we know realistically, a lot of the population of people falls between the medium and low income end. So when we advertise landed properties for say one million excision in process, you find out that you can get 1,000 people in a day who can afford one million. But when you put up land with three or four, maybe 40 million in a jar, you maybe the entire estate, number of people that will subscribe will probably be 50, vis-a-vis -vis the one million. So what does this tell us? It tells us that a lot of people actually want to own a home. Everybody needs shelter. But the affordability is not there for the average Nigerian. And then when government comes up to say, oh, we're not going to do this any longer in Lagos. You have to buy from us. So every property has to be titled. So that market closes. So we're not able to sell that. It's a big challenge. Now, we're faced with, you just have to sell, you know, titled properties, which means that it's only for those who can afford it. So what it means, our Benicio, is we want to preach affordable housing. We want, you know, to be able to make someone who never thought they could even own a piece of land. At least starting to own a home starts with having the land. If you have the land, you can build at your pace and become a house owner eventually at your own pace. But it's a situation where a law is pronounced to say, okay, stop on extension in process for now. It means we can go ahead. That's one. Two, you can give your prospect or customers a definite time to say, this is when you will get the CFO. This is when you know, we can't give time specifics. And for us as a company, we have a lot of people in the diaspora that buys from us. They operate in, you know, economies that are stable, environments that are relatively planned. So when you, they want to invest back home, because a lot of them still feels they believe so much in Nigeria. So when they come home like that and they are not able to understand why you will tell them you can't give a time specific to say this is when the title will be ready. So some of this have become a major challenge for some of us who practice real estate, you know, that, you know, we've been working with government, even though government has told us a lot they've been doing to try to digitalize um, the CFO process. They've showed us a lot of things, you know, but we hope everything comes in, you know, into fusion early so that this will help us. I still have other two challenges, but let me just stop here for now so that I can allow other speakers say some of this. Thank you. I think I will also jump on um, what has been said, which um, I, I'll say that um, it's, it's a financing issue. The major challenge is financing. The ethic of every developer is financing. The ethic of the end user is financing. So at the center of everything, it is financing. Recently, I was, I was in London, um, attended a program in Oxford, and had a lot of people from different places in the world. And I started telling them about some of these realities in Nigeria, you know, the mortgage Home ownership is less than 20%. Mortgage penetration is about 5%, you know? And they, they, they just, their, mind, their mouth was, was, was wide open because the question they asked is that, so how do you buy the property? And I couldn't just answer because, because I asked to ask myself, how do people buy the property? Given that all these structures, all these things are not in place. So it's a financing thing. I don't think it's a lack of houses to buy. I think it's just um, lack of finance to buy them. And affordability and ability to buy is key to home ownership. So just to provide a solution, I, I would say collaboration is the way forward. Even though regulation is also a problem, like, like she said, but I would say collaboration is the way forward. Even to solve regulation issue, collaboration. Um, I, I want to say the developer will have to collaborate with government, but I would, write, I would like to say government have to collaborate with the players too, because it sometimes look like we, the developers, have so much to do, but I believe the government has so much more to do because if not for the players in the industry, the gap will be wider than it is. So collaboration in the regulation issue, when it comes to finance, collaboration is the way forward. Because one thing you notice in Nigeria is that um, everybody wants to be everything. You want to be the financier, you want to be the builder, you want to operate it, you want to... And if you compare with other, other clients in the world, you see that it is segmented. There are people who just, they are fund managers and they don't bother to develop. Some people develop, they don't operate it. Other people operate it. And if you share the roads that way, we segment the roads that way, I believe much more will be achieved. The basic problem with, with housing, and I'm talking residential housing, in a metropolitan city like Lagos is threefold. Accessibility. Security, 
and infrastructure. Get these three right, and, with, and, I'll, and I'll give you an example. Look at the Lagos Ibadu Expressway. A friend of mine approached me and said, you know the DG of BP? This was some years back. Not this current government. Can they please give us a concession to do a bullet train from Ibadan to Lagos? 40 minutes. In between the highways. I thought it was the most brilliant idea anybody could come up with. One stop in Shagamu and the next stop in Ikeja. 40 minutes. What does that mean? It means, for example, if I was a low-level income earner, why do I want to live in Lagos? I can simply live in Ibadan, where you know the Yoruba proverb that Yalo de Ibadan, Omoegbe Nileko. The boys' quarters in Lagos is more expensive than the detached house in Ibadan. Apologies to my Ibadan friends here. But that's the truth. We live in abject squalor. Look at the roads leading to this place. It's absolutely disgraceful. You need to have a 4x4 four four to live in this kind of location. Because you if you take your car through this road every day, after one rainy season, you'll be looking for one month to buy another one. The second one is security. Why are we all clustered together? It's because there's insecurity everywhere. For example, and let's take the Peruvian example, when Peru was going to solve its housing problem, and it was a very major one, far worse than Lagos, what they did was to open up the hinterland, secure everywhere, and the problem in eight years, I think, disappeared. Look at the congestion on the uh, Lake Ekwe Expressway. And somebody is putting a toll gate to further increase the problem. Whereas solving the problem is so easy. Ikorodu is there. Put a bridge between Ikorodu and, Lake, and um, VGC. Put another uh, bridge between um, Oronshoki and uh, Leki. And you have decongested that route. The basic problem we have is we don't think outside the box. All government thinks of is come and buy land and they collect money. This is, in the civilized world, infrastructure precedes development. In our own world, development precedes infrastructure. These are part of the problems. The third one, right, is, no, I've mentioned the infrastructure, uh, security, and, and what? And accessibility. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, all I've said well. Mine is just to contribute. Uh, if you look at finance, I think uh, in the finance house are not helping matters. So I go straight to the point. Over there overseas, for those of us who live there and have one or two things going on for us, you can actually easily approach the bank. Once your credit history is OK, you can get a loan. But here, uh, you have to sell your teeth and probably uh, sell your mom to be able to assess a loan. I was discussing with um, uh, my bank, uh, one of my bank's uh, MDs, and um, yesterday actually, and we we're talking about money. So after we come to a point, I said, well, sir, do you realize that the banking system in Nigeria is a job? only collecting. They don't give out. And uh, you use the money that we give to you to buy FS and increase our burden. If this is uh, addressed, whereby policy is put in place that the, uh, there is a fund meant for developers to assess easily, I think that will also boost the deficit in the housing sector. Then uh, our dear 
dad, uh, friend, spoke about uh, security and uh, the accessibility. Accessibility is a major issue. Pointing out the lucky access, I believe those of us who live in that access, we are living in hell. I was leaving my office, between my office and here, could not be more than 15 minutes. But I ended up doing an hour plus. I mean, that is on a good day. If it was uh, on a normal day, you could do two to three hours. Now you think about the man hour, the wear and tear on the car, the time, and all the rest of it. Now, people want to live in places where they can access uh, their jobs or businesses. As a result, they cluster themselves in a certain location. This will drive properties to the roof, definitely, because the demand is there. And so if this is addressed, I believe some of these things, like I, I, the, the road they are doing, can you imagine? You have a contractor who is working, looking at the suffering of the people on a weekend that is supposed to be light. That is when the contractor go on a break. It doesn't work. Holidays, they don't work. I mean, I, I just wonder that is it really in a, a good environment that we are living in that the government doesn't care about the people, the suffering of the people. You buy a brand new Jeep, just as I was coming in, I was looking at it and I said to myself, I said, look at these infrastructures here. And the roads is nothing to write home about. The rains are coming. Uh, Victoria Island will have some heat of water. So I think the government has a lot to do in this area. And the banking institution, in order to open up uh, the gap that we're having at the moment. Then the policies of government, I mean, sometimes I, I actually wonder, do we have people who went to school? And these guys, they travel abroad, they have their investments abroad, they assess things very easily, and the policies they know. So why can't we bring them home and make it work? It's really, really, I don't know if it's a court, and this is what they have agreed that this is what we have to do to inflict punishment on the citizens. So for me, I think there is a solution, but the people who are leading has to make good policies. Thank you.